with you this morning, opening to John the 8th chapter and the 30th verse. John 8 and 30. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thought Brother Bill was going to preach my scripture this morning. Hallelujah. And when you open it up to John 8 and 30 and you look at this, you'll think, well, wow, what in the world has this got to do with what Brother Bill was talking about? Well, we'll get there in just a matter of a few minutes. I'm not going to preach very long this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. John the 8th chapter, 30th verse. When you have it, say amen. Amen. All right. As he spake these words, now Jesus has been preaching. He did a lot of that, amen? Amen. Preaching, teaching. Yes. Hallelujah. As he spake these words, and you can go back and read what it was that he was preaching about, what he was saying. It says, Many believed on him while he was preaching. Amen. Amen. Oh, I hope that this morning, if you're out there under the sound of my voice, if you're listening, no matter where you're at, if you don't know Jesus, I pray that you believe on Him while we are preaching this morning. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Because if you live your whole life, amen, and never meet Him, you have lived it in vain. My, my, my. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on Him, If you continue in My Word, then you are My, sight, my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Are you glad for the truth this morning? Amen. Amen. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. And they answered, yes. We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Oh. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered, answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. So see, Jesus wasn't talking to them about a man being over them yeah. as Pharaoh was over the children of Israel in Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was talking about being in bondage to sin. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And He said if you commit a sin, and that in the Greek, Brother Bill, means to continue in. Yeah. Amen? Okay. Remember what He said up here just a minute ago? Let me find it so I can read it to you. He said if you continue in My Word, then you are My disciples indeed. Now he's telling them if you continue in sin, you will be a servant to sin. Amen? Oh, great. A lot of people today, when you go to talking about the things of the law and things of the Word, they'll say, don't you tell me. I'm not under bondage to the law. No, you're under bondage to sin. Right. Amen? Amen? This morning. Hallelujah. You'll be the servant of sin. That's what Jesus said. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the Son abideth forever. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Woo! Well, that'll preach this morning. Amen? Amen. If the Son will make you free. See, you can, you can experience some things in this life that make you feel a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Oh, but not like Jesus. Amen? Amen? Because if Jesus makes you free, you will be free indeed. Right. He says, I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. In other words, you imitate your father. You imitate your daddy. Amen? Amen. You ever heard somebody say you act just like your daddy? Right. I've heard people say that. Usually it's whatever they're acting up. Right. Amen? Yeah. Usually whenever they're being mean, <laughs> British least, they say you just like your daddy. Mm -hmm. Amen? So he's telling them you act just like your daddy, which kind of sets them back and confuses them. They say, now wait a minute. Abraham is our father. I'm reading from verse 39. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. In other words, you would act like Abraham. Amen? You would have the nature, at least some of it anyway, right. of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I, ha which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Oh. You do the deeds of your father. Yeah. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. 
And Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father... Oh, He's getting down where the rubber meets the road now, ain't He? Amen. See, you ask God a question, He's going to answer you. Amen? Amen. If, you, if you act dumb with God, He's going to explain it to you where you can understand it. Amen. And that's exactly what He's doing with them. Absolutely. Don't let me lose you. If God were your Father, you would love Me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but He sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Now, here we go. They want to know what He's talking about. What's He tell them in verse 44? You are of your father, the devil. Oh my goodness. Why? Well, let's read on. In the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Amen? So he's telling these people, you act like your daddy. And they say, wait a minute. God's our father. And Jesus said, well, if God is your father, then why don't you act like it? Amen? You, more, you act more like the devil than you do... God today. Amen? That's what He's telling them. You act more like the devil than you do Abraham. He said you are of your father the devil. Now listen to me. I know there's not a one of us born again, saved believers. I know there's not a one of us that are perfect. Let's just get that out of the way. Amen? There's not a one of us that do not fall. There's not a one of us that do not, do not have faults and failures and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we're a liar. Amen? Right. Every one of us sin. Every one of us mess up. But, there should be enough evidence in your life to prove who your daddy is. Yeah. Amen? We should be able to take a spiritual DNA test today to find out who's your daddy. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And Jesus is saying the way you act, Tells me who your daddy is. Let me ask you this question this morning. If the child that lives next door to you looks more and acts more like the milkman than he does the man that's in the house that's supposed to be his daddy, what would most people think? The milkman's his daddy. Amen? I ask you this question this morning in the Spirit. If you act more like the devil, then you act like Jesus, then you act like the divine nature of God, who's your daddy? Come on, come on. Amen? I know we got a whole bunch of people out there today that think you can live any way, do anything, but I listen, if you feel that way, if you can't tell who your daddy is today, you might want to check in the Spirit and see if you've been born again. Amen? Amen. Who's your daddy? Who do you act like? Come on. So, Brother Miller, what's that got to do with Father's Day? Because in order for you to be a good daddy, you've got to get this right first. You cannot be a good earthly father until you get your relationship right with the Father. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm not talking that. If we ask you today, what is the well, who, what do you think it takes to be a good dad? Well, some of you, I'm sure, would say to provide for your family financially. And that's a good answer. To give your children every opportunity to be successful in life. That's a good answer. Right. To give your children a good education. That's a good answer. Right. But that's not the best answer. Amen? In order to be a good earthly father today, in order to be a good earthly dad today, you've got to get your relationship right with the father. Amen? Yeah. That way you take on his nature and you can pass that nature on down to your children. Right. Amen? It's not how much money you leave them. It's the kind of legacy of faith that you leave them. You can work 60 hours a week and have a nice home and give them a college education, but if they miss out and put hell wide open without you ever teaching them about Jesus, without you ever talking to them about Jesus, without you ever sharing the Word with them, what have you done? How successful has your... How successful of a father have you been if you do not raise up your children in the fear and the admonition of the Word of God? You supplied for them financially? That's great. That'll pass away. Amen? You gave them the opportunity to get a good education? That's great. But where there is knowledge, knowledge will cease. Knowledge is not everything. God doesn't put a premium on ignorance. 
But he doesn't put education above spirituality either. Right. Amen? The most important thing in your child's life today is not what kind of secular education they get. It's what kind of spiritual education they get. Because that's going. To, whenever it's all said and done, whenever you lie beneath the side of this earth, that's the only thing that's going to matter. Is your relationship with Jesus. Not the degrees you've got on your wall. Not the college you attended. Not the education that you had. Right. But how you stood with Jesus. Amen. And until you get your relationship right with your Heavenly Father, it's impossible for you to be at least the Father that God wants you to be. Amen. The Daddy that God wants you to be Amen. in this life. Amen. He wants you to be the spiritual leader of your household. Amen. You cannot do that unless you have your relationship right with the Father. Amen. You cannot do that if you have the nature of the devil instead of the nature of God. Amen. In order for you to be the right kind of earthly dad, you must have your relationship right with your heavenly Father. Amen. Because you, Daddy, influence your children. Amen. And you don't get a second time around. Amen. Amen. If there's one thing I've learned, in being with these kids and spending time with them and teaching them and praying for them and spending time with them. Boy, time goes by fast, Brother Bill. Right. And you can't take the clock this morning and turn it back and think, well, I wish I'd have did stuff different right. with my kids. Amen? I wish I'd have spent time with my children. Can't turn that clock back and do it today. I wish I would have took the time to teach my children how to pray. Can't turn that clock back and do it again today. Amen? So you only get one chance at this. One time around. Amen? They spend time with you. They see the way that you live. They hear the way that you talk. And that in turn has a great deal of influence in molding them and the way they act the things they see, the way that they live, the way their life turns out. Amen? Right. And you can't do this right unless you make sure you got your relationship with the Heavenly Father right. Amen? Yeah. How many times have you heard a little one say a bad word? Because they heard mom and daddy say it. Right. Amen? Amen? Oh, it's the truth, ain't it? Yes. I've heard little kids say, but daddy says that. Mm. And mama will say, yeah, daddy says it, but you ain't supposed to say it. Well, how does he know? Daddy says it. Amen? Wow. Daddy does that. Right. How many times has mama and daddy's prejudices rubbed off on to their children? Yeah. Now see, when they're born, they don't know. They don't know to hate somebody because of the color of their skin. Yeah. They get that from mama and daddy. Oh. Amen? I've heard people say, and they, they use the N-word, and they put down people of color and, 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 and other, race, other races simply because, well, that's the way we were raised. You're right. Yeah. It was instilled in you by your mother and your father. Amen. Those racial slurs that you hear people say, you got that from somewhere. Right. You wasn't born speaking that way. Mm. You got it because of the influences in your life. Right. So mom and daddy passes down their prejudices. Amen? Amen? How many times has a teenager stuck a cigarette in their mouth or a beer in their hand simply because they see mom and daddy do it? Can I say something this morning and not lose everybody that's in here? Do you realize how hypocritical it is for you to tell your child not to use that word when you use it? Do you know how hypocritical it is today for you to stand there with a beer can in your hand and tell your children you're not supposed to drink? Right. Amen? Amen? It's time somebody called on mamas and daddies to toe the line. Amen? Amen. Family means little of nothing in, the, in America as we know it today. Amen? It used to be important to America the, 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 the relationship between a mother and a father. Amen? Right. 
Now we've got more single moms raising children. And a lot of them, it's not because the daddy walked away. It is in some cases. But sometimes a woman just wants to have a baby. But she don't want to have a husband. Yeah. She wants to be a single mother. That ain't the way it's supposed to be. Right. Amen. Absolutely. A man and a woman are supposed to come together in love, in holy matrimony, then have children, then raise those children in the, in the beautiness and the holiness and the admonition and the fear of the Lord. Right. That's true. It gets me many times people who have babies dedicated. And they think that really does something and it's not a bad thing to do and I'm not down in it. But that's not for the baby. Amen? That's for mama and daddy to stand there and vow before God that they will raise that child in the fear and the admonition of the Word of God and in the faith of Jesus. Doesn't save you, baby. All it does is you stand before God and vow to Him that you will raise the baby right. Amen? And you can't do that until you have your relationship right, Daddy. Amen? Amen? You can't be the Daddy that you're supposed to be until you have your relationship right with the Father. Amen. Until you have the relationship right with your Heavenly Father. Yeah. How many times have children said, but Daddy says that. Mommy says that. Daddy does that. Mommy does that. Come on. You see, if we will act more like our Heavenly Father, right. then whenever our children act more like us, it will be a thing to be proud of and not something to be ashamed of. Amen. Amen? Most of the time when Mama says you act just like your Daddy, is she's ashamed the way you're acting. Right. Amen? See oh, my, my, my. God, give us a desire to have our relationship. I don't want anybody to have to wonder who my Daddy is. Amen. I'm talking about in the spiritual speaking. Amen. Amen. I don't want anybody to have to because of my actions. Well, I don't know whether he's saved or not. Yeah. I don't know whether he's born again or not. I don't know whether God's his father or the devil's his father. Acts more like the devil than he does God. Amen. That's what he's telling these people. He said, you act like your daddy, the devil. Amen. Boy, that's some tough preaching right there. You can go back through all my sermons. I ain't never told any of you your daddy was the devil. Amen. Amen. Jesus preached it hard. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And like I said, none of us are perfect. Every one of us have faults. Every one of us have failures. Every one of us comes short of the mark. Right. None of us are perfect. There is, you're not going to be experienced sinless perfection in this life. That's right. Boy, I just heard some bubbles pop. <laughs> Amen. You're not going to... I know that we've got people they have got wrote down, I was saved May the 5th. I was sanctified May the 6th. Amen. Sanctification is a process. All right. Amen. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen? Amen. Right. Oh, listen to this. See, the Jews of the first century, for this least, they had an expression that we use today quite often. Yeah. Like father, like son. How many times have you heard the apple doesn't far too far from the tree? They watch you. They follow after you. Joe Crabb wrote a song and said, I saw two little feet walking in my footsteps. I heard a little voice asking things I didn't know. I touched some tiny fingers and reached out for direction. If He's going to follow me, Lord, i got to know which way to go. Amen. He can only get... That's right. If you get your relationship right. What did Jesus tell them? Jesus told them in John 14 and 9, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh, I wish people could I wish we could say that. If you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. Oh, boy, wouldn't that be great? Amen. Amen. But more times than not, it's a glimpse of something else they get. Right. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. It's time for us to take stock, find out where we're at. Quit blaming everybody else. Amen for the faults of, and for everything that's going on in our country. Amen. And start looking at what we're doing. How we can change things. You can change a nation on your knees. Right. Amen. I'm not saying not go to the voting booth because that's great. I vote every time there's a presidential election. Every time there's an election, I go in there and vote. But you can do a whole lot more on your knees than you'll ever do in the voting booth. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. 
Are we talking this morning about who's your daddy? Who do you act like? And the influence that you have on your children. Amen. Our Heavenly Father today has shown us the greatest example of love ever known to mankind. An unselfish, unconditional love for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's love this morning. Amen. Love of our Heavenly Father. And I know that the world that we live in today does not put much, put much emphasis on fathers anymore, but God does. God still requires you, Daddy, to be a spiritual leader. Amen. And in order for you to do that, you've got to get your relationship right with the Father first. Yeah. Amen. It's not going to do it. It ain't going to be good enough for you to lay on the couch with a beer in your hand and send your children to Sunday school. Come on. Amen. And think you've done your Daddy's duty. That's exactly what it is in God's sight. That's Daddy's duty right there. All right. Lay down on the couch with a beer in your hand, making sure your kids go to Sunday school. Amen. Right. Get up off the couch, throw away the beer can, put on some clothes, and come to church with your children. Amen. Right. Teach them. Train them. Pray with them. Amen. Yeah. These are the things that they're going to remember the most. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I got some words to a song up here today I want to read to you. I don't know who wrote it. Grandfather smoked and had a taste for booze. Next thing you know, granddaddy's son did too. And when that boy had children of his own, addiction was the only seed he'd sown. Second verse says, He had a special name for every man, for anyone that wasn't just like him. His children used the words they heard from dad. If they're not like we are, we don't like that. The chorus of the song says, Pass it on. Pass it down. We all leave more than a headstone in the ground. Pass it on at the end. Will you leave them all your love or all your sin? You can make it right or wrong. Pass it on. The Bible says, No man liveth unto himself, and no man dieth unto himself. Amen. Those words are no more, no more true than in the case with a daddy and his children, yeah. a mother and her children. You affect their lives. Amen? Right. The thing they're going to remember the most is not going to be the steak that you were able to put on the table. The thing they're going to remember the most is that because of all the hours you had to stay away from home in order to put the steak on the table is they didn't get to see mama. They didn't get to see daddy. The thing they're going to remember the most is whenever they bruised their, scratched their knee yeah. and Mama was there to put a Band-Aid wow. on it. The thing they're going to remember the most is whenever Mama put her arms around you and said, I love you. I love you. You're my baby. It's not all the money. I know we get this thing backwards. Amen? Wow. It's not all the things that the world has to offer, but it's what kind of godly heritage you leave for your children. What kind of godly heritage, what kind of mark yeah. do you leave on your children? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many knows in most cases, even though you don't want to, in most cases, abuse children, they grow up to abuse their children. Right. Because mom and daddy did that. Amen. Even though they vowed, I'll never do this to my children. Still, many, many times, more cases than not, it it ends up being that way. Amen. Because the way they were treated, they treated other people. Amen. Yes, it's still important today that dad be a dad, a spiritual leader, that mom be a mother, a spiritual leader. Amen. 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 You can only be a good father when your father is the Lord. You can only be a good dad whenever your relationship is right with the Lord. Amen? No other way to do it. You can't do it any other way. I know you can work and you ain't got time for church and you don't have time for God and you don't have time for reading your Bible and you don't have time for prayer but you're putting food on the table. You're giving them an education. Well, that the education is great. The food is good but that's not what's most important. The most important thing is what you do for them spiritually Amen. and the mark that you leave on their life. Amen. Go with me to Luke the 15th chapter. 
in the 11th verse. And let's look at such a father this morning before we close. Luke 15 and 11. Luke the 15th chapter, the 11th verse says, and he, and he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the young, the Bible says the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there the Bible says he wasted his substance with riotous living. Yeah. Here we find a rebellious son no longer wanting to be under the headship of his father. See, you can always make sure that they do the right thing. You can raise them. You can instill it in them. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. When they older, they will not depart from it. Meaning it will not depart from them. It will always be there. No matter what they do, I guarantee you, whenever this young man went out and was, was using the money with riotous living and partying with friends, somewhere in the back of his mind was his daddy, his godly father, his heritage that he'd been raised with. Amen. You can't always make them do the right thing. But you can put enough of the Word of God in them. And whenever it comes down to choosing, amen, they know the right way and the wrong way. After that, it's their choice. Their choice what they do with it then. So this young man, he takes his living, he goes out and he wastes it with righteous living. This is what Brother Bill was talking about. He gets down to where he's just scraping bottom. He's got nowhere else to go. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. Ain't that the way it is? When you got all kinds of money, you got lots of friends. When you ain't, you ain't got nobody. And when he came to himself, thank God for that, Amen. he said, How many hired servants of my fathers had bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants, as like Brother Bill said. The father that had given him what he asked for and allowed him to go, Hallelujah. When he got back, he finds that father looking and watching for him. How do you know, Brother Bill? How do you know, Brother Billy? And he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, hadn't he made it to the father's house? His father saw him. He had compassion on him. And he ran and he fell on his neck. And he kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. He's messed up. He's failed miserably. Oh, now he goes back home. He's standing there, Brother David. He's ready to pay the price. Amen. He's ready to just be a servant. Yeah. Ready to face the music to suffer the consequence of his actions. Let's see what the Father does. But the Father said, we could stop right there. And if we filled in the blanks, we'd probably say the Father said, hey, Boy, you don't spend all the money you had. Everything I gave you. Your inheritance. We could fill it in with a lot of stuff. Amen? Get out of here. Go back where you came from. I've disowned you. That's not what the Father said. The Father said to His servants, He didn't even address the wrong that the Son had done. He turned to his servants and bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. They began to be merry. Now I want to ask you something today. Something regarding this prodigal son. Suppose you could see him years down the road. What do you think would be engraved in his mind from this experience? What do you think would be the thing that was engraved on the heart of the prodigal son? Do you think it would be daddy's money? No, that was all gone. Amen? Do you think it would be the righteous living or the good times that he had with his friends before he ended up in the hog pen? No. The only thing that that would bring to him is remorse and grief. The thing that would stand out in his 
mind the most, the thing that left the most impression upon him for the rest of his life, I guarantee you, it wasn't the money. It wasn't the righteous living, but it was the mercy of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. It was the grace of the Father. It was the love of the Father. It was the nature of the Father. Amen. It was the, oh, hallelujah. It was the forgiveness of the Father. Hallelujah. Those are the things that mattered the most. Amen. When your child stands at your graveside, it's not going to be the money you left behind. It's not going to be the home you left behind. It's not going to be the degrees you allowed you help them to get to hang on the wall. It's going to be the nature. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to be your nature, your love, your compassion, your forgiveness. It's going to be the nature of your heavenly Father that you pass down through them and to them and into their life that they're going to remember the most. That's what's most important today. I wish we could get a hold of that. I wish if there was enough dads out there today that could get a hold of that, we would see a change in America. Right. Amen. Amen. We would see a change in America. The president would probably get the glory for it, but we would see a change in America. Amen. Amen. Because daddies decided to be the spiritual leaders that God wants them yeah. to be. Amen. Right. Loving their children, caring for their children, teaching their children about Jesus. Amen. These are the things that matter the most in life. Amen? Right. Teaching your children about Jesus. Teaching them the Word of God. Allowing your Heavenly Father to live through you and to show through you to your children. Amen? Amen. That's the things that are most important. I tried to quote a scripture to you earlier and I'm closing. Romans 14 and 7, For none of us liveth to himself and no man died to himself. I'm telling you, those words are no more, in, no, no more truer than when you apply them to the relationship of a mama and a daddy to their children. Amen. Amen. It's important today that daddy have enough backbone to tell his kids, children no and yes. Amen. It's important. To, I heard one man say, well, you know, this is my house, but what they do in their room is their business. Oh, that's where you got it wrong. Amen. What they do in their room ain't just their business. It's your business too because you're going to stand and give an account for what you allowed in your house. Are you going to be like Joshua that stood there in front of all of Israel and said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? Or are you going to be one of them wimpy dads that stand there and say, well, I couldn't control. They just did whatever they want to do. Yeah, what was you doing? Laying on the couch watching a ball game? Amen. Stand up and be the spiritual leader of your home that you're supposed to be and get, the, get some change in it. Don't worry about prayer in school yet. Amen. Let's get it back in our homes first. Uh, hallelujah. And then they'll see it by getting it back. See, it left homes long before it left school. Amen. If it hadn't been out of homes, it wouldn't have been able to be taken out of school because somebody, somewhere with enough backbone would have stood up to that witch Madeline Murray O'Hare and said no, my baby's going to be able to pray in school if he wants to pray in school. Amen. Amen. We need people with backbone. Yeah. Men and women of God with backbones to be the mom and daddy right. that God wants them to be. That's right. Amen. Mom. To be the mom and daddy. The last verse of that song that I read to you reads like this. Talking about the Heavenly Father. Yeah. He could have left this world without a prayer. Most of the fools that He knew didn't care. Come on. Instead, He saved us all from being lost and did it as they nailed Him to the cross. Pass it on. Pass it down. You can teach your children He rose from the ground. Pass it on at the end. You can leave them all His love or all your sin. Yeah. Pass it on. Come on. Whether you know it or not, you're passing your nature on to your children. Amen. Amen. And I know we went a long way around to get there, mm. but if you get our if we get our relationship right with our heavenly Father, right. then we can be the leaders that God wants us to be. <coughs> Amen. Who's your daddy this morning? Somebody else have something before we go?